Welcome back. Two states from the south-south zone, Akwaibom and Cross River, say they are working together to improve their economy. The partnership will promote opportunities for economic activities and they will look at the oil and gas sector and agriculture. The governors of the two states, Udomi Manuel and Ben Ayade, met in Calaba, Cross River State Capital, to firm up the relationship. It's not often you hear two states coming into partnership. But here, the governments of Cross River and Akwaibom states have resolved to work together to improve their economy. The two governors and the minority leader of the Senate get into a closed-door meeting in Calabar to fine-tune the partnership which will include oil and gas, agriculture, as well as the manufacturing sector. We have agreed that we must have a South-South Forum where the governors of the South-South and the National Assembly members and leaders of the South-South must sit down and discuss the national question that Cross River State, Akwaibom State and all the Niger Delta states must sit together to discuss the fate of this country. We are trying to redefine and reappraise what we've done so far and see what we can do for our people. That we can't pay lip service again to poverty alleviation. We need to take some actions. But permit me not to mention those actions on camera. These are things that we still need to brainstorm and see how we can actually get to where we are. For the minority leader of the Senate, who is also from Akwaibom State, this kind of cooperation is needed in the south-south geopolitical zone to cement the common heritage of the region. Uh, Cross River State has a lot of landmass, and uh, yes, a quite of has, but not so much in terms of commercial farming. And they, both of them discuss how they could cooperate together to employ more people and get our people to farm so that we can even become a kind of food belt for the nation. And uh, I think these are things that will deepen the unity of the two states. So I'm very proud of both of them, and I, I'm very certain that from the National Assembly, if there's anything that has to do with enabling law, that nationally we will be able to uh, work together to get it passed. The Niger Delta region is one area that has suffered many years of degradation following oil spills and economic exploitation. And this is what this partnership wants to address. And those involved say they are optimistic that it will surely succeed. And from there we move on to sports. Here's Charles Aruka. Welcome to Sports News. We begin with table tennis. Nigeria's duo of Aruna Kodri and Olajide Omotayo have been seeded in the men's doubles event of the 2017 ITTF World Table Tennis Championships holding in Dusseldorf, Germany, later this month. 32 pairs were seeded for the championship, with Kodri and Omotayo ranked the best pair in Africa, occupying the 22nd position. In the women's doubles seeding, Africa's singles champion Olufunkesh Oshonaike and Cameroon's Sarah Hanfu are 32nd in the list. Team Nigeria have also been seeded in the mixed doubles with Shagun Toriola and Oshonaike rated 18 ahead of Egypt in 22nd. In football, Juventus reached their second Champions League final in three seasons with a comfortable aggregate victory over Monaco. Already leading 2-0 from the first leg, of the Italian side extended their advantage when Mario Mandzukic stabbed in after his initial header was saved. Dani Alves doubled their lead on the night with a volley from goalkeeper Daniel Subasic's punched clearance. Kylian Mbappe turned in Jao Moutinho's low cross to pull one back in the second half. Juventus will face either Real Madrid or Atletico Madrid in Cardiff on June the 3rd. FIFA's Secretary-General Fatma Samoura has reiterated FIFA's zero tolerance for racism in the wake of Suleiman Tari's suffering abuse in Italy. The Ghanaian received two yellow cards for complaining and walking off the pitch after receiving racial abuse from the stands. Although Sierra As disciplinary committee described the behavior of the fans as deplorable, no action was taken against the club. Meanwhile, FIFA's ruling council has replaced ethics investigator Cornell Bobley and ethics judge Hans Joachim Eckert. Eckert and Bobley will not have their mandate renewed despite expressing a desire to continue their work cleaning up the body. During their time in charge of FIFA's ethics committee, they oversaw the suspension and expulsion of top officials, including former president Sepp Blatter and secretary general Jerome Valker. 
Colombian investigator Maria Claudia Rojas is the new head of the investigatory chamber with Vasilios Skouris of Greece taking over as head of the adjudicatory chamber. And that's it on Sports News. It's back to Ijoma with the rest of the news at 10. Thanks, Charles. Now, over 100 people have been injured in a gas explosion in Ghana. Witnesses say the explosion occurred today when a gas tanker was discharging its contents close to a petrol station on the road. They said an anomaly was discovered, prompting the intervention of the fire service, but the tanker receiving the gas exploded, injuring all five servicemen who were there. Alarmed by the event, people fled when the tanker discharging the gas exploded, causing more chaos. Many of those on the road at the time of the incident were wounded and the injured have been receiving treatment. South Korea's liberal candidate Moon Jae-in has won the country's presidential election, accepting victory, he told supporters today, who will be a president for all South Koreans. An exit poll showed Moon garnered 41.4% of the votes against his nearest challenger, who had 23.3%. And the main news again. Residents of the Oboro community in Yenagua, the Bayosa state capital, today took to the streets in protest over the murder of a 17-year-old girl. The victim is said to have been lured by her boyfriend to a hotel and killed. The police have launched a manhunt for the suspect. Also, the Senate and House of Representatives Appropriation Committee is today presented the report of the 2017 budget before the National Assembly. And a gas explosion in Takurari town of Ghana today left more than 100 people injured. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Hunyato. Good night.